good morning children last class i have discussed uh, with you about a uh, circulatory system of human being in that especially i discussed with you about blood and component of blood all i discussed and i gave as a homework for you also and functions of blood also i have discussed with you uh, today i am going to discuss with you about uh, blood vessels and uh, structure of heart types of circulation all i am going to discuss now uh, blood vessels you know very well blood is uh, passed inside the tube blood is passed inside the tube and the tube carry the blood to all the regions or all the tissues of our body isn't it children so this blood vessels are different seen as different types in our body okay what are the different types of blood vessels which are seen in our body are arteries veins and capillaries what is arteries see actually arteries which carry the oxygenated blood that means pure blood we can say pure blood means what the blood which consists of more oxygen and less carbon dioxide that is called what oxygenated or pure blood we can say okay so pure blood or oxygenated blood in the sense it is not only carrying an oxygen that is it carry the oxygen rich blood okay so arteries carry oxygen rich blood that is called oxygenated blood in that there is an exception that is pulmonary artery pulmonary artery carry deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs from the heart to the lungs this is the only exception of artery which carry impure blood or deoxygenated blood same way deoxygenated blood in the sense impure blood what is impure blood or deoxygenated blood it is nothing but children the blood which carry more carbon dioxide is called what deoxygenated blood okay right so that's what about arteries we can say what about veins in structure also we can it is thick elastic all we have say about arteries that all we will see in detail in our text and next one is veins so you know very well veins which is uh, when compared to arteries veins are less thick and less elastic and it carry impure blood it carry impure blood that is a deoxygenated blood to from the body part to the heart from the body parts to the heart okay here also there is an exception that is a pulmonary vein which carry oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart okay so this what about arteries and veins what about capillaries the capillaries are nothing but a thin or tiny blood vessels which is supply blood to the tissues and it is made up of only one cell thickness okay children this is about the different types of blood vessels seen in our body okay children uh, let's enter into the text about blood vessels blood what is uh, what are blood vessels see blood vessels are a network of branched tubes that transport blood there are three types of blood vessels namely arteries veins and capillaries so what are blood vessels and means in its types you can have as to marcosin blood vessels are a network of branched tubes that transport blood there are three types of blood vessels namely arteries veins and capillaries let's see about arteries as i said arteries are thick and elastic vessels that carry blood away from the heart to various organs of our body all arteries carry oxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery which carry deoxygenated blood to the lungs from the heart okay this is the thing about arteries what i said the same thing is here in the text also and let's go for veins veins are thin and non elastic vessels that transport blood to the heart from the different organs okay so arteries carry blood from the heart to different organs of our body 
veins carry blood from different organs of our body to the heart okay and all veins uh, carry deoxygenated blood yes uh, all arteries carry oxygenated blood except pulmonary artery here ulta all veins carry deoxygenated blood except pulmonary vein which carry oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart that's what about arteries and vein children next we will enter into capillaries capillaries are narrow tubes formed by branching of arterioles which then unite to form the venules and veins they are about 8 mu m in diameter capillaries are formed of single layer of endothelial cells okay right children so what are capillaries actually the biggest artery in our body is aorta which originate from the left ventricle of the heart then which uh, the aorta which emerge out of the heart is divided into two uh, many branches called arteries the arteries e then each arteries is divided into many arterioles then again many this each arterioles divided into meta arterioles and this meta arterioles further divided into a fine tube is called capillaries okay children again this capillaries are reunited to form venules and this venules reunit form a veins veins reunit to form vena cava vena cava open into the right auricle of the heart uh, by pouring the deoxygenated blood children this is what a connection between the arteries and the veins that is the connection between arteries and veins or capillaries okay arteries branched to form a capillaries capillaries you need to form a veins this is what i think it is a continuous supply of blood taken place in our body so then uh, another thing its uh, size what is the diameter of the capillaries 8 mu m in diameter and uh, what does the cells of capillaries made up of the cells of capillaries made up of single layer of endothelial cells that's all next we are going to see the difference between arteries and veins and uh, four mark sometimes since it have seven points you will have us here seven mark question also children please uh, this is a one of a homework question today difference between artery and vein then uh, artery then distributing vessel that means what is mean by distributing vessel the artery carry the blood from the heart to all parts of the body that means it distribute the blood from heart to all organs of our body and what about veins the veins is a collecting vessels what is mean by collecting as i said the veins collect the deoxygenated blood from various organs and to empty into the right auricle of the heart okay that's what it's a collecting vessel it collect the deoxygenated blood from various organs of our body and uh, taken to the heart heart send it to the lungs there or uh, oxygenation taken place in the lungs and again the oxygenated blood enter into the left auricle through the pulmonary vein this what and uh, uh, about a color arteries are pink in color veins are red in color and the location the location where it's seen arteries are located deep inside of our body arteries are located deep inside of our body then veins are superficial in nature veins are superficial in nature and blood flow with high pressure or uh, in arteries blood flow is high pressure in veins blood flow with low pressure then what about the wall of artery as uh, we discussed the artery of the the wall of the artery is uh, strong and thick and elastic in nature wall of veins is weak thin and non elastic all arteries carry oxygenated blood except pulmonary arteries all veins carry deoxygenated blood except pulmonary veins then internal walls are absent internal walls are present okay so these are the difference between arteries and veins okay next one next see the structure of the blood vessels you can see arteries red color arteries blue color or vein in between the branches are called capillaries arteries divided to form a capillaries capillaries reunit to form venules venules reunit to form veins veins carry deoxygenated blood to the heart okay next we are going to see 
types of circulatory system this I, uh, I might be discussed with you about it. Uh, there are two types of circulatory system one is open circulatory system another one is closed circulatory system. What is open circulatory system? It is nothing but um, the blood is not carried inside the vessels blood is not carried inside the vessels then how the blood is transported to all parts of the body that is nothing but the blood both the organs blood both the organs when the blood passed over the organs in the space between the organs or over the organs in the body cavity the oxygen and the nutrient diffuses into that particular into the all tissues of our of the body so since the blood is not carried through the blood vessels it is openly like a river it is flowing this is called open circulatory system and a closed circulatory system the blood is passed inside the blood vessel that is what and a closed circulatory system okay it will not uh, the blood only carry to each and every cells of our body okay blood vessels only then this is called what closed circulatory system so open circulatory type let's enter into the text children in open type the blood is pumped by heart into the blood vessel uh, that open into the blood spaces called sinuses okay so blood is pumped by the heart into the blood vessel but blood vessels uh, what it will do it open into the blood spaces not in the again arterioles arteries like that it is uh, pumped into the space open space in the body that open space is called sinuses the sinuses are the what are sinuses these sinuses are the body cavities which are called the hemocele so the cavity which is present in our body also we are having cavities in that cavities only all the organs are located that is another thing so that is a hemocele then capillary system is absent example arthropods mollusk and ascidians okay so in simple heart pump the blood to the blood vessel but blood vessels further will not pump to the another tiny blood vessels so it pump the blood to the sinuses so sinus um, uh, both the organs and uh, the organs receive blood in such a way so this is called open type of circulatory system it is seen in the uh, phylums arthropods mollusk and ascidians next closed type in closed type the blood flows in a complete circuit around the body through a specific blood vessel cell. The blood flow from arteries to veins through a small blood vessels called capillaries example vertebrates ok this you could understand I think so children close to type the blood flow inside a complete circuit there is no opening at all but in open type there is no capillary system since because capillary only connect the arteries and veins since it connect there will not be any leakage of blood into the body. But here in open system there is no capillary so blood pump the blood directly into the sinus that is body cavity through the body cavity organs receive the blood but in closed type the blood is confined only in the blood vessels it will not there is no uh, leakage at all that is a capillary connect the arteries and veins so blood is uh, running inside the blood vessels so example vertebrates closed circulatory system was discovered by William Harvey who is regarded the father of modern physiology one mark question you can mark next we are going to see the structure of human heart it's a very uh, easy thing because uh, you started learning of uh, structure of heart from your lower classes onwards I think so so very easy this is a heart is a muscular pumping organ that pump out the blood into the blood vessels human heart where it is located it is located between the lungs the space between the lungs is called mediastinum in that mediastinum only heart is located so that is what human heart is situated between the lungs slightly tilted towards the left and above the diaphragm in the thoracic cavity okay then heart is uh, made up of a special type of muscle you know very well that is cardiac muscle next what about okay where it is heart is a muscular organ okay where it is located how many chambers are there it has four chambers where it is located it is located in between the 
two lungs it's slightly tilted towards the left side and uh, about the diaphragm what is diaphragm so nothing but as the sheet between the thoracic cavity and abdomen which involved uh, in respiration which involved it has uh, it take part in respiration okay important uh, it take uh, important role in the respiration process okay so above the diaphragm the heart is situated next what uh, type of muscle uh, does the heart has um, it has uh, cardiac muscle it is present only in the heart next what about uh, heart membrane the heart is closed in a double walled sac called pericardium so like our body is covered with skin right same way the or the heart is covered by a membrane double walled membrane not a single membrane double walled membrane the double wall membrane is called pericardium then in between the membrane and the heart there is a space this is called a pericardial space and the pericardial space is a uh, filled with a fluid called pericardial fluid and what is the function of the pericardial fluid it reduces the friction during heart beat and protect mechanical injuries this is what uh, about the membranes of heart that is heart is covered by double wall membrane called pericardium and uh, it contains lubricating fluid uh, one point i set as extra that is in between the pericardial membrane and heart there is a space called the pericardial space right the pericardial space consisting of a lubricating fluid called the pericardial fluid the functions of the pericardial fluid is uh, reduces the friction during heart beat and protect it from mechanical injuries okay next coming for a uh, heart structure the human heart is a fourth chamber the two upper thin walled chambers of the heart are called auricle or atria in single a we can say it as atrium and the two lower thick walled chambers are called ventricles the chambers are separated by a partition called septum the septum between the auricle and ventricles prevent the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood you know children heart is divided in, into four chambers right you will be sure of that okay uh, right side of the heart consists of upper right auricle lower right ventricle the same way left side of the heart consists of a upper left auricle lower right left ventricle same way so another one concept children always right side of the heart carry deoxygenated blood always left side of the heart carry oxygenated blood right so what is the thing is the there should not be a mixing of uh, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood in the heart that's what the two chambers of the right auricle right ventricle are separated from left auricle left ventricle by a septa okay this is what the heart chamber consists of septa how does the oxygenated deoxygenated blood of heart prevented from mixing you can have a say question the oxygenated and deoxygenated question, uh, blood of the heart uh, is uh, prevented by mixing by the presence of septa in between the right auricle left auricle and right ventricle left ventricle right children so this is called septa the two auricles are separated so you know please imagine uh, since uh, we are not having a direct class uh, in a classroom atmosphere i couldn't draw the diagram and explain the structure of uh, heart children please imagine yourself that is uh, upper two chambers or right auricle and right ventricle right so the right auricle and right ventricle are separated by a interatrial septum same way the right ventricle and left ventricle separated by interventricular septum that we will discuss uh, in subsequent uh, paragraph children the left atrium is smaller than the right atrium the right atrium receive you know very well right side of the heart always receive deoxygenated blood left side of the heart always receive oxygenated blood so, so right atrium receive deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body through the main veins superior vena cava and inferior vena cava and coronary arteries next pulmonary veins bring oxygenated same 
same simultaneously the pulmonary artery uh, pul sorry pulmonary veins brings oxygenated blood to the left atrium from the lungs the right and left auricle pump blood into the right and left ventricles respectively so the right and left auricles pump blood into the right and left ventricles respectively that's all so right auricle receive deoxygenated blood and pump into the right ventricle same way left auricle receive oxygenated blood from the lungs and pump into the left ventricle simultaneously the ventricles from the form the lower part of the heart the as i said the two ventricles are separated from each other by interventricular septum the left ventricle and the right ventricle have thick walls because ventricles have to pump out blood with force away from the heart why the walls of the ventricles are thicker than the walls of the auricle because the ventricle only contract and pump the blood auricles are only receiving blood ventricle only pumping the blood so since it want to pump its wall should be thicker than the auricle from the right ventricle arises the oh, sorry very sorry children right very sorry very sorry okay so from the right auricle arises the pulmonary trunk which bifurcate to form a right and left pulmonary arteries okay children please imagine there is a four chamber you put a four box upper two chambers are auricles okay upper two boxes are imagine as auricles lower two boxes imagine as ventricles okay from the left ventricle from the sorry right ventricle originate or arises a pulmonary trunk or pulmonary arteries okay left right ventricle la irundhu pulmonary artery arise aagi heart la irundhu veliyila vandirudhu veliyila vandittu it divide bifurcate means what divide into two that means pulmonary artery from the right ventricle comes out of the heart and bifurcate that is divide into two branches one is right pulmonary artery which enter into the right side of the lungs and another one is left pulmonary artery which enter into the left side of the lungs for uh, carry the deoxygenated blood there it give the deoxygenated blood for oxygenation what is mean by oxygenation it is nothing but in the lungs the blood given the carbon dioxide given the carbon dioxide or exchange of gases that is alveoli when we are seeing respiration please we can see it in detail about it when we inhale the oxygen from the atmosphere it enter into the lungs in the lungs there is say, a millions of uh, tiny sacs are present these sacs are called alveolar sacs the oxygen we consumed or enter into the alveolar sacs the alveolar sacs are um, uh, the wall of the alveolar sacs are rich supply of blood capillaries so the oxygenated blood which enter into the pulmonary artery and carry to the uh, lungs in the lungs it enter into the so uh, capillaries which surrounds the alveoli already alveoli has oxygen more oxygen here there is a concentration gradients what is concentration gradient movement of any molecule from higher concentration to lower concentration right so in the alveoli please imagine uh, alveoli is a small uh, sac like structure the wall of the alveolar wall richly supplied with blood capillaries okay which carry blood the uh, oxygen we consumed is more uh, present in higher concentration in the alveoli sac the same way the pulmonary artery carry the deoxygenated blood uh, enter into the lungs and reach the all uh, blood capillaries in the alveolar wall so the blood capillaries of alveolar wall consist of more concentration of carbon dioxide so right so in the capillaries blood of alveolar wall has rich carbon dioxide 
inside the alveolar sac rich oxygen. So, when compared to capillaries, alveoli consist of more oxygen. Same way, when compared to alveolar sac, blood capillaries have more carbon dioxide. So, automatically there should be a diffusion of a concentration gradient. What is mean by concentration? As I said, movement of molecule from higher concentration to lower concentration. In the blood capillaries, more carbon dioxide is present. So, automatically the carbon dioxide from the blood capillaries enter into the alveolar sac. Same way, alveolar sac consists of more oxygen. Automatically, the oxygen from the alveolar sac enter into the blood capillaries. So, now oxygen, this is what di carbon dioxide enter into the alveoli. From the alveoli, it is enter into the branchi, branchial trachea, pharynx and nostril and nose and send it out to the atmosphere, carbon dioxide veli la vandhiru. Appa alveoli ili irukko kudi oxygen, blood capillaries kula vandha achi. Blood capillaries vandhittu oxygen ay eduttu kittu reunit ay to pulmonary vena form ay again it enter into the right ventricle. That's what is cycle taken place. Okay children. So here uh, I said most probably the half of the circulation I said to you. Arise the pulmonary trunk coming for the text children. So, from the right ventricle arise the pulmonary trunk which bifurcate to form a right and left pulmonary arteries. Right and left pulmonary arteries supply deoxygenated to the lungs of the respective side. The left ventricle is longer and narrower than the right ventricle. The wall was, uh, walls are about three times thicker than the right ventricle. The left ventricle gives rise to, okay, right ventricle gives rise to pulmonary artery. Send deoxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygenation. What about left ventricle? Yes, in left ventricle also there is a blood vessel arises called iota which is the biggest arteries in our body. Iota carry oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to all parts of the body for oxygenation, okay. So, oxygenated blood is supplied by the iota to various organs of the body. The coronary arteries supply blood to the heart. Next, walls. What is walls? You see, you see children, uh, already I said right auricle, left auricle, pump the blood into the right ventricle and left ventricle of their respective chamber, isn't it? Okay. So, right auricle pump the blood into the right ventricle. You should know one thing children, once the blood from the right auricle or left auricle enter into the right ventricle, left ventricle respectively, it will not back once again to the respective auricles. One time auricle in the ventricle vandruchi blood abdina, again it will not enter in back or again enter into the what? back into the auricle. How it should be prevented? Yes, there is a wall in between the right auricle and left ven right ventricle, left auricle and left ventricle. What is the name of those uh, walls? It is nothing but between the right auricle and right ventricle, there is a wall called tricuspid wall. Between the left auricle and left ventricle, there is a wall called bicuspid valve or mitral valve. These valves prevent the backflow of blood from the ventricle to the auricles. Same way, so then from our ventricle, where does the blood should go? Yes, there is a question and already we discussed also. From the right ventricle arises a pulmonary artery, you know. So, from the right ventricle, the blood enter into the pulmonary artery. From the left ventricle, the blood enter into the aorta. Okay, so... Um, once the blood from the ventricles enter into the uh, pulmonary artery and iota respectively, immediately the pulmonary artery and iota closes by a valve called semilunar valves. Okay. So, this is what a valve. valve. What is the function of valve? It allows one way direction from auricle to ventricle only, not a ventricle to auricle. Same way from ventricle to where? respective blood vessel, right ventricle to pulmonary artery, left ventricle to iota. It will not get it back again. Once the blood enter into the blood vessel, immediately the mouth of the blood vessels closes by a valve called a semilunar valves. That is what? This is called valve. So, the valves are the muscular fluffs that regulate the flow of blood in a single direction and prevent a backflow of blood. The heart contains three types of valves. As I said, what are the three types of valves? 
tricuspid wall, palm, uh, bicuspid wall and palm, uh, sorry, semilunar walls. Then right atrioventricular wall, let us see, this is called, that is adhile, adhile irukkudhuma, right atrioventricular valve, that is the valve present in between the right atrio, uh, that means auricle, ventricular, that means what, ventricle, so in between the right auricle and right ventricle. So, right atrioventricular valve is located in between the right auricle and right ventricle, right? Uh, it is located between the right auricle and right ventricle. It has three thin triangular, you can uh, see in the figure itself children, three thin triangular leaf like flaps and therefore called the tricuspid valve. And then apices of the flaps are held in position by chordate tendine arising from the muscular projections of the ventricular walls known as papillary muscles, okay. The tricuspid wall held in position by chordate tendine, where does the chordate tendine arises? It is arises from the papillary muscles. Next left atrioventricular wall, it is located between the left auricle and left ventricle. And it has a two cusps and therefore called a bicuspid or mitral wall. Next, the last one is what? Semilunar wall. Last one is what? Semilunar wall. The major arteries that is pulmonary artery iota which leave the heart have a semilunar wall which prevent the backflow of blood into the ventricle. They are the pulmonary and aortic semilunar valve. If the semilunar valve present in the pulmonary wall, pulmonary artery, it is called pulmonary semilunar valve. If it is present in the iota, it is called aortic semilunar valve. That is all children. So children, I will uh, stop with this. Next class, I will discuss with you about the type of blood circulation. Uh, hope you could understand clearly about it. And the homework, what I want to give to you is, uh, two questions alone, okay, children. One is uh, write about the notes, write about or write short notes on blood vessels, and uh, second one is difference between uh, arteries and veins. Third one, write note on the type of circulatory system. These are the three questions I have given as a homework for you, children. Complete it and keep it ready. Uh, we will meet in my next session. Until then, bye. Take care, children.